Okay, so it's time to get into the soldering nitty gritty. Uh, now, first thing, I didn't mention this in the previous part, but one of the things you're gonna need is uh, something to hold the connector and to keep it solid. I happen to use, uh, this is a spare Boss old chromatic tuner. You know, I'm sure we've all seen these things before. Uh, I just use this, uh, just something so that way I can actually put the, the plug in and have it uh, be held nice and stable. So that way when I'm doing the soldering, it works just fine. Uh, you can also use like a piece of like get a thick enough uh, get a thick enough piece of wood and like drill holes just big enough for the the plugs to go in. Uh, you just want some way of keeping the jack stable. Otherwise, if you don't want it you don't want it moving around on you while you're trying to solder it. Now, just a quick uh, talk about what soldering is. Uh, it's heat transference. That's the key. So what you're doing is is you're heating. You're going to put the conductor of the cable onto these terminals. Like these are the two terminals you, you're going to solder from. In fact, let me point these out better. This is the tip, this is the ground terminal. Uh, we're only dealing, also with instrument cables, we're only dealing with a mono signal. Uh, so hence one conductor and then the shield's gonna go right there. And the shield actually meaning the, the shield of the cable itself, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, so what you wanna do is you wanna get the, you wanna get the terminal and the, the, uh, the element hot enough so that way as you feed the solder into it, you actually see it uh, kind of you know, bleh, it'll like splooge uh, and uh, adhe adhere to both uh, the terminal and the cable itself. If you start feeding the solder into it and you notice it's only bubbling up on the top, but it's not like really like mushrooming out, then that means the, you don't have enough heat on the actual terminal itself and that's not gonna be a good solder joint. That will become cold, what they call a cold solder joint or something like that, where basically the solder just adhered to the cable itself, but it didn't adhere to the terminal and therefore at some point it'll just snap and break so yeah you want you want that you're going to want this nice melting effect that uh you'll see in just a moment uh between the two so once you've cut once you've cut your length of cable uh let's uh, which i have already and here's the cable itself and sorry i have to deal with the shallow depth of focus here uh first thing you're going to do is and again some of this is just going to take practice so it might even be worth it to just take uh you know take a couple of jacks and some scrap cable and just practice this on your own uh, before you actually do the real thing, or just go jump right in, uh, whatever you're most comfortable most comfortable with. So the first thing you're going to do is we're going to take off about that much of the cable, uh, because that's all that's all you need to create uh, enough length to connect in there. So the first thing you do is take your exacto knife or this wonderful tool, and we're going to uh, apply just a little bit of pressure. And the point on this one is we just want to get the jacket off, the jacket meaning. Uh, meaning uh, the, the black outer coating. So as you can see, so there. Now I, I've got the jacket off, and what we have exposed here is that's the shielding. That is the outer shielding. So then we take the outer shielding, and by the way, if you've cut the shielding, like when you, when, this is what I was hinting at earlier, uh, if you apply too much pressure, you're gonna cut too much of the strands of the shielding off, and then it's not gonna, you're, you're gonna have to snip that off and start over lower, but that for your, reducing the length of your cable, hence why I was saying you might want to practice, because if you precisely measured out your cable and you screw up the, the tip a couple of times, and all of a sudden your cable's too short to fit where you need it to. So you're going to grab them, just loop them around like that, and then you're just going to twist them. Now, with the Belden, and every cable's a little different, but with the Belden you see there's this plastic, uh, plastic piece that's surrounding the actual core itself. So the next thing we're going to do is we have to we're gonna cut just about that much, oops, about that much of it off. Because this actually has to go, same thing, we're gonna apply some pressure, not too much, because you don't wanna cut the actual the core that's in the middle there. Twist it a bit, and yeah, there we go. And now the copper, oops, it's hard to see there, uh, the copper core is now exposed, yay. Twist a little bit. Now. The one thing we're going to do first is, uh, or the next thing we do is what we call is tinning. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply a little bit of solder to the, uh, uh, hold on a second, let me get in position here. Ah! Cable, stay. All right, so what we're going to do is, let's see if I can get this to, there we go. Okay, so the first thing we do is we're gonna apply a little bit of solder to the raw cable itself. That's what we call tinning. Uh, it just helps it to 
adhere better and it just creates a more solid connection. So the first thing we do is you just take the, take the iron, touch it. This will touch, start with the tip, or sorry, we'll start with the core. Uh, and then you just, the solder will just melt nice in, uh, inside of there. Clean out the extra goop, rub it, you know, take it off via the sponge. And now we're gonna do the same thing with the shields. And as you see, uh, just, just lightly have to hold it on there and eventually the solder just melts into it. And voila, now we've tinned our cable. So put this back to where I had it. Eh. It's hard, I'm a one man show here, sorry. There we go. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is take this and so now you can see that that's nice and tinned, uh, both the lead, uh, the, the core, as well as the shielding is tinned on there. Now, this is way too much. We don't need that much. So you're gonna bend it up like that. And then as we take your trusty wire snips and we're gonna cut about that much off. Let me do it over with my trash can. So we're gonna have that much left. Now, uh, for this particular type of connector, having that much core exposed will be fine, but usually you wanna, you only need about that much as well. So just do that. Okay, so the first thing I do is take the core, because the core is, this is the tip, this is the sleeve. And if you didn't, if you don't know that about a connector, when you're talking about these connectors, see the little, the black separator in the middle here? That's the tip, that's the sleeve. These are the two different parts of the signal that comprise your guitar tone. The tip connects to the core, the sleeve connects to the, to the, uh, the shield. So what I do, because there's a nice hole in here, I just kind of bend it in like that. And then we take the wire, or this is very difficult to do one hand, all by myself. I really need a cameraman help. Let's try this again. All right. So as we hold this, now you see there's these, there's these little pincer things here, that's to help crimp the cable in place. So once you get the cable where you need it, you can use the, uh, let me see, am I in focus here? Yeah, it looks like it. All right, so you hold the cable in place and you, you're gonna go ahead and crimp the cable down, crimp this down both ends. It doesn't have to be like super, super crimped. You just want it enough to, because you don't want it to pierce the cable. Uh, you just want it to be enough there to hold it in place. And voila, now makes life a lot easier. And now we're actually going to solder the cable onto the connectors. Now this is, now this is what I was talking about where uh, ideally you want to pay attention to, get this in a better position there, okay. Uh, you want to pay attention to what I was talking about is as I feed the solder to it, watch how you have enough heat on both the conductor and the element so you see the solder uh, kind of melting into the element. So we're going to leave it on here for just a little bit and then we feed it into it. There, you see how it's melting onto both? Let it go and just let it dry for a bit. And then same thing under, on the underside here. I kind of touch the tip of the, so of the soldering iron to the... To the uh, the tinned bit of shield and the element. And then we feed it and it's there, there, now it goes. That first bit, it was just bubbling on the top of there. Now it's going and then we're done. So that's this end. Uh, now something really important, uh, now it will be hot <laughs> uh, for a few seconds. Uh, so as you can see, that's, me. Get it up nice and close here for you. Ah! Nice and close here for you. There we go. Uh, as you can see, see that's nice and everything. It's all the solder is melted on between the connector and uh, the shield, you know, the core and the shield and the actual terminals themselves. So you got a nice solid connection there. So let's go back. Okay, now one of the things you need to do is now, that was the starting end of the cable, so I'm okay in this particular case. But this is the one thing you don't want to screw up on because I've done this plenty of times. These are other, when it comes to these connectors, there's two other parts. 
there's this plastic shield, this little plastic bit here, and then there's the actual end itself. So if you already have a connector on, like say I had a connector, say I had a connector on this end, well, there's no way I can fit these onto the cable because you can't, you can't put that over the cable. It doesn't work. So you've kind of hosed yourself. So because this is the first, uh, because this is the first end of the cable I'm doing, I can do this now. The first thing you're going to do is feed the plastic on. And the reason why is the plastic, the plastic is going to cover these parts like so. And then we go ahead and push, put the, uh, the metal sleeve on. Eh. Get over here. And voila. And so then we take that, that'll go through like that. And then we screw it on and yay, we now have a connector. All right, so now it's time to do the other. Now I know the one end, this is the end that's going into uh, this particular cable that I'm wiring is going to go from uh, the Axe FX uh, output to send for the effects loop of the Axe FX. So this is a send. Uh, sorry, this one's actually going to be the return. So this is coming from my Big Sky, one of the outputs of the Big Sky into the actual Axe FX. So the, the Big Sky end is going to have a right angle terminal like this. The other end, it's just going to have a regular, the end going to the x is going to have a regular straight terminal. Now you'll notice this one already has some solder on it. I ran out of brand new ones, so uh, I'm reclaiming old connectors uh, that, because I've got a bunch of cables that I made that I no longer use. This is the beauty of soldering is, you know, I can go ahead and just reclaim my own connectors. Granted, you can do that with solderless as well, but again, you're paying eight bucks a connector instead of a dollar. So let's get that in place now because I already have an end on this cable. Before we even do anything, again, we want to put the uh, we're going to put the the metal sleeve on first, and then we're going to put the plastic sleeve in there second because remember it's going to go plastic sleeve. The plastic sleeve is going to go onto the connector, and then this is going to close it off. And so you together. put those on in, in that order. Do the same thing where we want to take off about, and then we go cable. ahead and put the plastic over it like such. And then we're going to put the uh, metal connector. All right, and now we want to test the cable. Uh, so what you do is you take your multimeter. It should have a just a normal open close option where you're just testing whether the circuit is open or closed. In fact, you can see. So this is the tips of the multimeter. So what you can do is if you touch them together, you get a nice little beep right there. That means it's a closed circuit. So you're going to, what we do is we test, uh, this is where it gets a little finagly. We're going to put one end and hold it to the tip. We want to test tip to tip, sleeve to sleeve, and then make sure there's no cross connection. So we're going to, we, I have the tip on this one. All right, we're good. And there's no cross connection with the shield. And so we go to the shield then on this one. Uh, shield, shield is good. Uh, and shield to tip, and there's no cross connection. So this cable is good. Voila, we now have a cable. And that is how you solder.